There has been plenty of talk about the winners and losers of the James Harden trade from the Sixers' perspective, but there's been one guy who has flown under the radar for how impactful he could potentially be to this Sixers team. In this video, I want to break down why Nick Batum could be the perfect fit as that final starting spot in the Sixers rotation and everything else that has to do with his game and how it will translate. Now, before I dive fully in, I do want to make sure that you guys are hitting that subscribe button that at this point in time, 82.6% of you guys watching the video have not subscribed to the channel just yet. The Sixers season is in full swing. Huge game against the Celtics tonight that I can't wait to tune in and watch. So we got plenty of big plans for the season. Make sure you are tapped in start to finish. I want to keep the Sixers Digest family going. My, my name is Sean Bernard, and I will be with you start to finish this season. So make sure you are tapped in right along with me. Now, I do want to get to the topic of today, which is Nick Batum. I begin by pulling up the full trade for James Harden once again. So the Clippers acquired 10-time All-Star guard James Harden in a blockbuster trade with the Sixers on Monday night. The Sixers sent Harden, P.J. Tucker, and Philip Petrusev to the Clippers for Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Nick Batum, KJ Martin, a 2028 unprotected first round pick, two second round picks, a 2029 pick swap, and an additional first round pick from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, I want to begin by saying that the, the prize of this trade is still the draft picks. Those are picks that have restocked the closet, allowed the Sixers to be active down the line if that missing piece does show face on the trade market. Those have the potential to be some very valuable trade assets and the key piece to elevating these Sixers to the championship contender, which, if we're being honest, there's still a pretty good chance they're a little bit short of. I do think this matchup against the Celtics tonight will be a good measuring stick matchup to tell where exactly this team is. Celtics also playing some very good basketball, and the Sixers, for the most part, have yet to be truly tested this year. But the bottom line is this created a solution by removing James Harden from this situation, allowed the Sixers to take a step back, evaluate the situation further, and figure out what that perfect missing piece could be in this lineup. Is it a Zach Levine? Is it a DeMar DeRozan? Is it an OG Ananobi? Is it a player that we have not discussed? This allows the Sixers and Daryl Morey specifically the time to further evaluate that. But in the process, they still recoup some assets that are going to make a positive impact on this team. We have not seen a ton of these guys yet, and I'm curious with the, you know, how hectic the schedule is on an NBA standpoint, how how these guys actually find their flow or who makes the cut for the rotation and who is not. It is a competitive group when we talk about how deep the Sixers roster is, and that is a great thing based on past years. The Sixers have never had this deep of team in my memory of these Sixers. Throughout the entire Joel Embiid era and beyond, they have not had this many playable rotation players. Like, we're talking about Furkan Korkmaz has had his resurgence as a guy that is showing face, and this is a guy that, at a point in time, was one of the primary bench weapons. To go through a period of time where he's completely buried and all of a sudden he's earning some minutes again, that just goes to show how much deeper the bench has gotten for how far down in the pecking order he has gotten, and then credit to him for kind of fighting back from it. But I do want to specifically talk about Nick Batum and what he brings to this team. I want to begin by just saying that he's a little bit more of the under-the-radar player overall. He's just a ultimate professional, a guy that has been around the NBA forever. And I'm going to begin by showing his stats here. So as you can see, been in the league since the 2008-2009 season, a career 36.5% three-point shooter. He's had some ups and downs throughout the years. He's obviously on the tail end of his career, but this is still a guy that not too long ago was averaging 15 points per game. He still does a lot of the little things, a super high IQ basketball player, a good rebounder, and to look at his career averages overall, 10.7 points, 5.0 rebounds, 3.4 assists. That 3.4 assists is pretty appealing to me because he is a guy who can be a secondary playmaker, a key connector in the Sixers offense. As I mentioned, a 36.5% three-point shooter on 4.4 attempts per game. There is a lot to like about Nick Batum. And the guy that I think he should be compared to when we talk about impact and role is P.J. Tucker. I will give P.J. Tucker a little more credit than most that I do admire the spunk, the heart, the competitiveness that he did bring to this team. But I don't think he was the missing piece to a championship in the way that many perceived it. That the Sixers got tougher by bringing in P.J. Tucker, but did they get better? I don't really think so. And to specifically compare Nicholas Batum and P.J. Tucker, P.J. Tucker having played five games on the year, uh, starting with the Sixers, then moving over to the Clippers. Nick Batum playing just one game with the Sixers and three games in the Clippers before being traded. But Nick Batum has already tallied 19 points. He had 11 points in his Sixers debut, which is more than P.J. has scored eight total points on the year. 
Now, there's obviously more to basketball than just scoring. And P.J. Tucker, to his credit, is still a, while well past his prime, is still a guy that does compete, does play high-level defense, and in matchups such as against Giannis or against Nikola Jokic, he did deliver. He did show up when the moments were big last year, but there was also just plenty of just straight-up cardio that he was doing on the court. And Clippers fans, by the way, seem to already be frustrated by that. And the biggest point about Tucker and getting off that contract specifically is it wasn't going anywhere. That yes, he's in the final year of an expiring on $11 million, but he got an $11.5 million player option for next year. Unless P.J. Tucker just loses the urge to play basketball and is over it, I can't see him not accepting that. That To play one more season, to make $11.5 million, which will be the highest paid contractual year of his entire career, I don't see him passing up on that money. So it is nice for the Sixers to be off that deal. And by the way, they, the Sixers have brought in a guy like Patrick Beverly, who I think brings a lot of similar characteristics from a toughness standpoint. And I honestly think Pat Bev is more effective in the role because of how vocal he is. That P.J. Tucker is so much more of a lead-by-example guy. Pat Bev is so much more expressive and vocal in the way that he goes about it. And Pat Bev was got on a minimum contract, so about $9 million less than what they had to pay P.J. Tucker. They get a similar effect at more of a position of need at this point because now the Sixers are deep at wing and they can have the guard help by having Patrick Beverly. But to talk about Nick Batum specifically, there's a couple things that I'd like to point out about his game. I'm going to begin with this Nick Nurse quote here on what he saw. This was after the the debut of Batum, and Nurse said, quote, He does things quickly. He inbounds the ball quickly. He cuts quickly. He turns and gets his feet set quickly. Like he does things at a super quick rate, but yet under control. But that was but that was good. He looked full of confidence, and some things that I see defensively, he's a good communicator out there too. He's a really good connector to this offense. That when we talk about what the Sixers roster looks like as a whole, if we want to run through these starters, currently Kelly Oubre has ascended into that starting role since the trade of P.J. Tucker. But outside of Oubre, it is Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid. So that fifth spot is very much up for grabs. If Kelly Oubre wants to remain in there, and he has earned the right to have that opportunity because he's played terrific so far to start this year, I personally would rather Ubre come off the bench just as a scoring punch off the bench, a guy that can be a microwave scorer in a hurry, and just to spread out the shots a little bit rather than Ubre having to defer to guys like Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. When he's playing along lesser talents with the bench unit, he can have a little bit more time to shine and is still incredibly valuable to this Sixers roster. I'm not diminishing the importance of Kelly Ubre whatsoever, but I do think Nick Batum could be a better fit as far as connecting things. Now, there's two plays here, two shots here that I want to show you specifically from Batum in his debut that kind of clicked for me for why he's so valuable. Both of these shots were off relocation of him using his basketball IQ to find the right spot on the floor and then capitalize by knocking down the shots. The second play in this video sequence is specifically off a double team that came from Joel. And the third point that I just want to hammer home is how quick his release is. That Nick Batum truly has one of the quickest releases across the entire NBA. He does a really impressive job of catching it in his shooting pocket and not having to have to dip down or slow up his release whatsoever. That it's an immediate catch and shoot. So take a look at these two clips here, and we'll be back. James, Beverly, to Nico Batum, and it's good on court. Big fella between the legs, he's doubled, Batum looking for more, and he's got it. Now that second play there where he's able to relocate, play off Joel Embiid, and then knock down that shot is incredibly impressive to me. That speaks volumes to what he can bring to that team. And he, by the way, still has some left in the tank as a defender. That there was a play in the debut where he forced a turnover, got up, immediately started talking trash, where I had a, a little light bulb pop in my head of, okay, this guy is going to fit just fine here. And that has been the story of Nicholas Batum, that he's played alongside a variety of talents, and he's always been an ultimate professional professional a guy who finds a way to fit and a guy who does the little things that benefit a team while he does not have this toughness or defensive mentality that some project in the pj tucker role he can do more from just an overall basketball standpoint that he's a more complete basketball player than pj tucker as a whole that there's plenty more that he can do and bring to the table from an offensive standpoint while still being competitive on the defensive end he's a little bit bigger than tucker he's a little bit more athletic than tucker at this point in both their careers and i will say that batum feels like he is just losing his physicality and steam at this point in his career at a much much lesser rate than P.J. Tucker. That it felt like Tucker was very much on the downhill track and will continue to be out in Los Angeles, but Toom, I feel like, has more in the tank. I also like the concept of him and Joel Embiid, that there does seem to be a dynamic growing there. 
These guys share similar roots. Both have families from Cameroon. Both started in Cameroon. Both are French citizens. There's plenty of ties there. And Batum spoke pretty highly of Embiid specifically, calling him his guy already and saying just how nice it is to be on this side of a Joel Embiid night. In the debut of Batum, Embiid, of course, dropped his 48 in 30 minutes, one of the more impressive individual performances we've seen so far this year. So he saw the Joel Embiid experience front and center. But I do like that there is a connection there. It's cool for what he brings to the table from a stylistic standpoint. So what I envision his role from here is, for starters, I'm not tied to this, that I would like to see some experimentation. Let's see what another starting lineup looks like. Let's see what Robert Covington looks like in the starting lineup. Why not? Let's play around during the regular season. But when things are said and done, I do think Nick Batum is my preference for the final starting spot. I do think that he can bring a lot to the table on both sides of the floor, be a key guy that can help with the playmaking, be a knockdown shooter in spacing the floor, has such a high IQ that he can find a place to fit alongside these high-level scorers and just high-level talents that the Sixers possess. So I'm very excited about what he brings. Now, this may not be a long-term solution. He's on an expiring contract. That was one of the things Daryl Morey was committed to, to preserving that cap space. But if Nick Batum plays himself into a role, he could be a guy that could be here for the future, that he very well could be signed to a new deal next year. But for starters, we have a whole season to evaluate this, and I'm very excited about what he could bring. Tonight's matchup against the Celtics will play a huge role. I think Batum will be a guy who gets the opportunity to see how he can stand toe-to-toe with a Jason Tatum or a Jalen Brown on the defensive side of the ball. If he's able to answer that call, that will speak pretty highly about how important he will be to this team. Overall, we will see, but I am excited about what Nick Batum brings to this team. I want to hear from you guys in the comments for what you think of Batum. If there's a player you prefer in that deal or that's exciting you a little bit more, let me hear it. But make sure that you are subscribing to the channel, dropping a like, dropping a comment, and I'll be talking with you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.